Hello and welcome to Fed Up. I'm super excited at what the Lord is doing in your life. I'm sure and I'm certain that the blessedness of God will keep unraveling and moving you to next levels of grace and power and access even to all that Jesus finished even at Calvary. Welcome to Fedor. Before we go into the depth of the word today, I'd like to like you to help me share this with somebody. Share this link with somebody out there. Let them know Fedor has started. I want to share something that is so important, so, so important. It's an important theme, even in New Testament. And I know that after now, your life will never be the same again. Amen. Amen. All right, today, I'd like to share with you from the book of 1 John chapter 1. And then we read verses 3 to 7. 1 John chapter 1, verses 3 to 7. The Bible says, That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that your joy may be full. Verse 5 says, This is the message that we have heard from Him and declare to you. Note that, that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. He said, this is the message we had. And now we declare to you that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, uh, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all our sin. Today, I'd like to share with you what I've titled, walk in the light walk in the light tell yourself i walk in the light walk in the light shall we pray father thank you because the entrance of the world we give light give understanding to us simple folks this day father this evening we come to learn at your feet i make my tongue the pen of the writer and i write the word of life upon the spirit of your people after now make us better people let us walk according to your concept for our lives Father, let the purpose of sending your word be fulfilled, O God. Thank you, eternal King of glory. In Jesus' name, and amen. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. You know, in the portion of scriptures we read, the Bible made certain things clear. It said in verse 6, If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, that means there are folks who walk in darkness. Scripture says we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all our sins. Amen. I'm not sure you would have been a believer for long before you started hearing words such as, I'm walk, I'm, I, I, such as I walk in the light. I walk in the light. Or somebody look at you and say, just walk in the light. Or somebody say, I am in the light. Or like they say today, I am light. I am light. What does this mean? What is the spiritual implication of such words? You know, you can be a believer and you can join them and say, you know, I walk in the light, walk in the light. But do you really understand what it means? Do you know what it means to walk in the light? Do you know what it means to, to say I am light? What is the spiritual implication? What does it mean to, to say I'm light? What, what is that word? What does that mean? We want to look at that even this morning. Because this is very powerful. Listen, this is very important. Because uh, it's one of the essence of the Christian faith. Actually, it's one of the basic and the most recurring, one of the most recurring themes of the New Testament. Uh, and it is the word light. It's the word light. You, you find it again and again in scriptures. Uh, in fact, the word of God will believe is light. Uh, and God himself is described as light. The gospel itself is the gospel of light. You know, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible says, uh, uh, as it concerns, uh, the Bible says, as it concerns the devil, uh, the Bible says, who the kingdom of this age has blinded their eyes. Uh, it says, let the glorious light of the gospel of Christ uh, may shine upon their heart. There is something called the glorious light of the gospel. The gospel itself is described as light. Uh, the Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 105, the word of the Lord is lamp unto my feet and light unto my path. It's light unto my feet and lamp even unto my path. You see, the word of the Lord is the essence of light. Light is one of the most important occurring themes, like I said before. Therefore, you must understand what does he say. 
If you are going to walk in the reality of what God has prepared for you as a believer, you must know what light means, sir. I want to share with you three basic truths from scripture, sir, as it concerns light. Three basic truths. Uh, there are truths you must have heard before, but I want to show you from scriptures and give you scriptures that explains it. So that you don't just shout it, you, you now find a foundation in scriptures, uh, which is what we call revelation. Because it's just not you just saying something, you have seen the source. Uh, and if the source is in the word of God, then it's going to be powerful. You know, whenever the source of a thing is in the word of God, you can tell that the thing will last eternally. Why? Because the word of the Lord does not come to an end. You see, what powers a thing will also tell what kind of energy it will bring out from. If you burn your, if you, if you power a thing with charcoal, then you will, see, you will need to keep re re reintroducing more charcoal, reintroducing more charcoal. Uh, and then if you cook with gas, it's going to be faster. But if you cook with nuclear, I mean, you can't do that. But I just tell you that nuclear energy is greater. Uh, the energy that powers uh, the word of God is the energy of God himself. Is the energy of his light. It can't be described with any kind of energy. I mean, one of the most powerful energies in the world today is atomic energy and the nuclear energy. But, but listen, when we talk about the energy of God, it's, it's, it's way different. It, it's energy that that, re, that re energizes itself. It, it doesn't go. It doesn't grow old. And that's the energy of His Word. So, want to look from the foundation of the Word and be able to tell, to tell what is light according to scriptures. Number one, basic truth is that God is light. Jesus is light. Listen, the scripture says that the person of God is light. What does that? What does that mean? It means that as it concerns God's nature, God's essence and character is light. The essence of God is light. The, the nature of his person, uh, the character of God is light. And this is very foundational. Listen, this is very important. If you don't get this, uh, you may not be able to get how it tells you that you are light. First of all, you must be able to get the truth that Jesus is light, that God is light. Therefore, when we pray and we we'll gather together and we say, come and manifest yourself, what we are asking for is for the essence, the nature of God to be manifested. And that is light. You know, have you been in a situation before and you don't know what to do? And somebody just says, I need light. I need light. When folks come, I need light. When light comes, I know what to do. Little wonder Paul was teaching the Christians at Ephesus. And he said that they may pray that their eye of understanding may be enlightened. You see, when your eyes may be open, but until light comes, you won't see what you ought to see. Right? So God is saying, I am the light. Little wonder the Bible says in James 1.17, Scripture called God the Father of light. Bible says every perfect gift comes from him. Who is the Father with whom there is no variableness? Who is the Father of light with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning? Is the father of light. He's light himself. You see, the essence of God is light. The essence of his person is light. J John chapter 1 and then verse 5. The Bible says, In him was life, the life, the light of man. He, he powers all things by his light. John chapter 3, verse 19. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light. Jesus had come. And Jesus is described according to scriptures as light. Bible says, and light has come into the world, but they prefer darkness to light. How, how do we know light has come? Because Jesus had come. So the essence of Jesus walking is light walking. He was walking in Jerusalem. It was light that was walking in Jerusalem. Bible says in 21, 27, 1 of Psalms, scripture says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. No, no doubt. That, if we talk about light, we are talking about God. We're talking about God is light. It's not that God has light. No. It's not that God can lighten up his space. No. We are saying that the essence of God, the, the essence of his person is light. John chapter 8 verse 12. Then Jesus spoke to them again saying, I am the light of the world. He didn't say, I am like light. He said, I am the light of the world. So the first thing you see in scriptures, and these are three basic truths, you must understand as a believer. The first one is that God is light. So say to your, so say loud, God is light. Number two is that we are sons of light. Glory to God. I love that. 
Listen, as children of God, we have privilege to be able to share and partake uh, out of certain parts of his nature and his attributes. Uh, the nature and the attribute of God. We have the privilege to share part of that nature. You know, a child will share out of something of the father. And that's what is called DNA. That's why you can trace it. Uh, the bloodline flows. Because we are sons of God, there are certain things that by privilege we also have, uh, we, we, we share part of from the essence of God. And one of that is light. Because God is light, sons of God are also sons of light. Praise God. Sons of God are also sons of light. John 12, 36, Why you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. He was telling them, now that I am here, believe in me. And he said, by the reason of their believing, something's going to happen to them. They are going to become sons of light. And you and I believe in Jesus. We have become sons of God. And so in our becoming sons, we have also become light. Glory to God. In our becoming sons, our evolution also means that we have also become light. Acts chapter 13 verse 47 Paul said it in the way I love it. He said, For so the Lord has commanded us, I have set you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be for salvation to the hands of the house. He said, I have sent you as light to the Gentiles. We are light. We are sons of light. Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8, He said, For you were once darkness. He didn't say, For you were once walking in darkness. He said, For you were once darkness. You see, the best way to describe an unbeliever is darkness. Little wonder when I see a believer who is affected and infect, infected with the virus of the word, I'm asking, don't you know that the word is darkness and you are light? You are not supposed to live by their standard. There is nothing darkness has that should be enticing to light. Nothing. Nothing. Because we are not the same. We are not just a little different from an unbeliever. No, we are light, we are darkness. Bible says, I may declare, he said, for you were once darkness. That means you did not have God. You are without God. You are not part of the commonwealth of Zion. You are, you are strangers to the promises. He said, but now you are part of the commonwealth of Zion. You are light, praise God. Now you are light in the Lord. He then says, Ephesians 5, 8, Paul encouraged them. He said, therefore, walk as children of light. He said, walk as children of light. So, one of the things that we are, is that we are children of light. We are sons of light. We are sons of God, yes, but we are sons of light. Glory to God. Number three, he, apart from us, and, and these are three basic truths. God is light. I am a son of light. I am a child of light. Number three, we are the light of the world. You see, when we say we are the light of the world, we are saying we are the hope of the world. I, you see, because we are light, they are darkness. It therefore means that if you take away all the light from the world, the world will be a dark place. Christians are the reason the world is, there's still hope for the world. When rapture takes place and God has taken his own away, then the world will be in a state of chaos. We are the light of the world. Apart from just being light, believers are the light of the world. We are not darkness. We are not like the world. We are the light of the world. We are called to be different. Listen, light doesn't learn to be light. It just shines. It, it just shines. You, you don't learn to be light. You just shine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. You don't have to, to, to have so much revelation so that your light is enough to, to power a whole stadium. No. Even if it's a candle, let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. You are the light of the world. Shine your community. Shine your family. Let it shine. I'm going to let it shine. Act 13, 47. He said, I've set you as a light to the Gentiles. We are set as light. We are not trying to be light. It is who we are. We are the light of the world. Bible made it clear. Jesus said it to them very clearly. Jesus told them, Matthew 5, 14. He said, you are the light of the world. A city set upon the hill. You cannot be hidden. 
Ransom, you are the light of that community. Ransom, we are the light of Iwefor. Ransom, we are the light of Lekki. We are the light of Lagos. We are the light of the world. We are not trying to be light. We are light. Bible says, for once you are darkness, but now you are light in the world. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8. Uh, somebody screaming, uh, I am light in the world. I am light in the world. I am light in the world. You see, having made that declaration, Paul says, begin to walk as children of light. Begin to walk as children of light. And that's a natural progression for our someone even this evening. It's a natural progression. We progress from Ephesians 5.8 with Paul's admonition that you walk as children of light. The question therefore is, practically, how do we walk in the light? Practically. What does it mean to walk in the light? You've had people say, walk in the light, walk in the light. Come on, walk in the light. Glory to God. You've had that almost all your time of being a believer. Can I share with you today what it means to walk in the light? Glory to God. I'm just going to give you five essence of walking in the light. And that will be all for today. Essence of walking in the light. You know, as believers, we must learn these things. We must see that these things are not so far beyond us. It's something we can walk in. It's something that can become our reality. It's an essence that God has made available for the believer. God's, prom God's, God's commands are not I. They are not eye sounding. They, they are not difficult. What does it mean to walk in the light? I'll, I'll break it down for you today. You will understand the essence of it, the practicalities of it, so that you can then begin consciously to make effort to walk in the light. Many years ago, when I found out this truth, it helped me to know this is what it means to walk in the light. So I, 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 I then begin to make conscious effort uh, to walk in these five practical steps because I know that as I walk in it, I'm walking in the light. You see, it's not something you pray for and say, oh, I'm walking your light. I walk in your light. I walk in your light. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. It's not something you will become. It's something that you are. You don't become it by prayer. You become it by seeing it and practically walking it. Ephesians 5 verse 8 say, as children, walk in the light. Walk. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Just walk in the light. You are the city set upon the hill. You shouldn't be hidden. Believers should be known as believers. We don't have to introduce ourselves in relationships that we have been in seven years and say, don't you know I'm a Christian? No. Your light should shine. Shine. Shine, baby. Shine. Child of God, shine. You call to shine. Shine. Now, five essence of practicals of, of walking in the light. Number one, When do I walk in the light? To walk in the light uh, means to walk as God would walk. To walk in the light means to walk as God would walk. Somebody say, I thought you said it to be practical. What are you telling us? Let me show you that in scriptures. Let me show you that in scriptures. First John chapter 1 and then verse 7. Look at that in scriptures. Very key. He said, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light. That's the key word there. He said, walk in the light as he is in the light. So I'm going to walk in the light. And scripture says, there is a full step to follow. There is a pattern to follow. He said, the pattern to follow is to walk in the light as he is. He is not walking in the light. He is light already. He is not trying to become. We are learning to walk in his light. But he is that light, the fullness of it. He is light already. He is the fullness. He doesn't become more light. Scripture then says, walk in the light as he is in the light. I see God in the light. And don't forget, I told you that light is the essence, the nature, and the character of God. So, to walk in the light, therefore, means to walk in the nature, the character, and the essence of God. That's what it means. That's what it means, practically. To walk in alignment and in tune with God. To allow God's essence, I love this. To allow God's essence, nature, and character to be reflected in you. To walk in the light means to allow God's essence, God's nature, and character to be reflected in you. You are walking in the light when the eternal attribute of God finds expression in you and through you. Then you are walking in the light. When the eternal attribute of God 
finds expression in you and through you. When I walk in kindness, because God is kind. When I walk in kindness, I do good to people. I give. I am just kind. When you are kind, you are walking in the light. Someone said, I thought it was only about revelation. No. <laughs> when you walk in the light as God is in the light. God is. He is light. He is in the light already. And he is kind. When I walk in kindness, then I'm walking in the light. When I do good, then I'm walking in the light. When you do good to others, when you do good, when I love, especially loving not my friend, Jesus said, even hypocrites, they, they love those who are their friends. When I love those who I should hate, when I love those who have chastised me, when I love those who have used me, then I'm walking in the light. The, the response of the flesh is to hate. But the response of the spirit is love. And I am therefore loving. Then I'm walking in the light. When I'm supposed to be offended and bitter, but my response is to love that person, then I'm walking in the light. You see, it, this, this is a dimension you must understand. And you see, there is such a blessing for walking in the light. So, such a blessing for, for walking in the light. Uh, for walking in the light. Bible says, and the blood of Jesus cleanses you from all sin. That's one of the benefits. We become like God. We are able to stand as light and salt in our world. We are able to influence people better. We live just as God would have lived. The Bible says, but we, if we live in the light as he is in the light, that's how to walk. When the eternal attribute of God finds expression in you, when you are faithful, when you are faithful, that's what it means. Not that you see somebody, you have, you have said, I'll marry somebody. And you have been dating that person. But somebody else now comes and he has much more money. And you now say to this one, go. That's, that's, that's not working in the light. That's not working in the light. Number two, practical. How do I work in the light? How do I, do I work in the light? When I prioritize fellowship with God. 4 John chapter 3 verse 4. 1 John 1, 3 to 4. The Bible says, that which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us. Did you see that? They said this is the purpose of writing to you. This is why we are telling you all of these stuffs. He says it is for the purpose of koinonia. He says so that you may have fellowship with us. And listen, your fellowship with us, your sharing with us is not the end game. He said, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. The end and the, the, the essence of all of this writing is so that you can have fellowship with us. Uh, even though us is just together, the core of the person we are worshipping is the Father. I said these things are right that your joy may be full. The essence of this scripture is fellowship. Listen, and that's why I tell folks that what, what one major difference between Yahweh and other pretentious God is that our God is a God of fellowship. Is that our God wants to be related with koinonia. Koinonia. That's the Greek word. The, the word fellowship is the Greek word koinonia. You are not walking in the light when you don't have fellowship with God. Can I say that to somebody again? You are not walking in the light when you don't have fellowship with God. To walk in the light is to walk in fellowship. Praise God. To walk in the light. So ask yourself where you are right now on your spiritual journey. Are you in fellowship with God? If you are in fellowship with God, then you are walking in the light. The word fellowship, like I said, is the word koinonia. What does it mean? It means partnership. It means contributory help. Is God helping contributory help not just for one party but from the other party also are you helping in the kingdom advancement you don't just receive from him koinonia means you're also doing your part it's about two persons together bonding as one it's communication it's intimacy one person can't have intimacy with himself it's with another entity God is an entity. He's come to have another entity, us. And he wants to have intimacy with us. 
intimacy with us. It's called fellowship. It's called koinonia. A fellowship in the spirit. It's fellowship in the spirit. Are you walking in the light? Ask yourself. Do you commune with God? Are you developing intimacy with him? Or are you just using him? You are not, there is no part you are playing. Are you in touch with heaven? Number three, we are walking in the light, number three, when we have fellowship with one another. I said the first one is that we walk as God in the word, manifesting his attributes. Number two, fellowship with him. But the third one is fellowship with one another. First John chapter one, verse seven. Let's read that again. Bible says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. So there is a response to, have, to walking in the light as he is in the light. The response is that we have fellowship with one another. I walk in the light when I prioritize the meeting together of believers. Fellowship with God must dovetail into fellowship with men. Fellowship with God must dovetail to fellowship with men. As you appear in church every Sunday, as you go for meetings, as you go for camp meetings, as you go for retreats with other believers, you are walking in the light. You are walking in the light. The word koinonia also connotes and has a spiritual implication. Uh, sorry, I said spiritual implication. It means as a social implication. And what does that word, what does it mean as it concerns that? Is that the word koinonia also means association. The word koinonia means community. It means communion. It means joint participation. So when you see the word fellowship in scriptures, and therefore, Paul, uh, therefore John said that you have fellowship, these things have been written to you, that you may have fellowship with us. Can you see that? He said that you may have fellowship with us. That's the kind of koinonia that has to do with them. It has to start from them, then it will get to others. It will get to God. You see, anytime we neglect meeting together with other believers, uh, we are not walking in the light. Matthew 18, verse 20. Jesus said, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, he said, I'm there in the midst of them. There is that ever presence of presence of God. Like the presence of God is present with you every time. Yes. But when believers gather together, there is what we call the manifest presence of God. And that's why Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them. When I do not forsake the assembly together of believers as the manner of some is according to Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25, then I'm walking in the light. Praise God, I walk in the light as I fellowship with other believers. I walk in the light. Praise God. I, that's why you look forward to Sundays. You don't stay at all because it's where two or three are gathered. You, you, you want to be in the assembly of the saints. You, you want to be in church. You're looking forward to Sunday. You are looking forward to midweek services. You are, you are looking forward uh, to the coming together of saints uh, because iron sharpens iron so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. It is what it means to walk in the light. If we don't do this, then we don't walk in the light. What does it mean to walk in the light? When I shun darkness. When I shun darkness. When I say no to the works of the flesh, then I'm walking in the light. First John chapter 1 verse 6. First John chapter 1 verse 6. Bible says, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. See that? See that? He said we lie. There are two words, right? There's the word of light and there's the word of darkness. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, scripture says he has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and conveyed us to the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus. Right? So there is that kingdom of darkness and the opposite of darkness is light. And herein, do we know whether we walk in light? When we shun darkness, I walk in the light. To walk in the works of the flesh is to walk in darkness. And no one who is walking in darkness can lay claim to walking in the light. Can I say that to you again? 
No one who is walking in darkness can lay claim to walking in the light. To walking in the light. Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 to 21. The Bible says, now the works of the flesh are evident. And I want to list these things to you. See, if you are walking in any of these things, then you are not walking in the light. Praise God. You see, hey, people just think, oh, when I get a revelation from the word and I can use it to claim a promise, that is walking in the light. No. No. It's bigger than that. It's part of it, but it's bigger than that. And that's what I'm showing you today. That's what I'm showing you right now. You, you see, Paul told us what the works of the flesh are. What the, what the works of the flesh are. And you see, people who operate under the works of the flesh, they are unbelievers. And so they are walking in darkness. Praise God. Look at this. He said, now the works of the flesh are heavy. Then. They are clear. They are manifest. Which are adultery. So, if you are an adulterer, you know you are not walking in the light. Fornication. Uncleanness. Lewdness. Idolatry. Sorcery. Hatred. Contentions. Jealousies. Outburst of wrath. Selfish ambitions. Oh, I'm just ambitious. If your ambition is selfish and it will ruin the other person or ruin other people, scripture says that's not working in the light. Dissensions, heresies. And therefore, we fight heresies. We contend for the truth of God's word. Why? Because it is not working in the light. Envy, murders, drunkenness, reverish, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand. Just as I also tell you in time past, that those who practice such things uh, will not inherit the kingdom of God. I didn't write that. That's in scriptures. That's in scriptures. They can inherit the kingdom of God. They, they, if you are not walking in the light, then you cannot inherit uh, the kingdom of light. There is the kingdom of darkness and there's the kingdom of light. Listen, to claim salvation while at the same time walk in darkness automatically dismisses our claims. It dismisses our claims. You can't be a fornicator and then you say you are born again. It dismisses your claim. Not only before men, but even in the spiritual. It dismisses our claims. Walking in envy, heresy, murder. It dismisses our claim. The time has come for us to be born again believers and to be born again in truth and in deed. It's not just a believing thing. In act. Act of righteousness. Act of holiness. I hear people say, in these days, I, I'm sure you probably would have had it. Ah, I, I want to trust God that you don't say that. I hear people say, let's put the Bible aside. Anytime we set the Bible aside, we are not walking in the light. Anytime we set the Bible aside, then we are saying we are setting the light apart. We are setting the light aside. When we do that, we switch off the light. How do I know again? What, what, again, you are not walking in light when you refuse the direction the leading and the prompting of the Spirit. Anytime we refuse the leading, the prompting, the directing of the Spirit, we are not walking in the light. It therefore means walking in the light is doing the will of God. Yeah, and that's the fifth one, and that's the final one. When, when do I walk in the light? When we practice the truth. I see a law in scriptures, and I practice it, then I'm walking in the light. When I stand on the Word of God, then I'm walking in the light. When I stand on the promises of God, then I'm walking in the light. He himself bore my sins on the cross and by his stripes I'm healed. And I stand upon the healing of Calvary. I'm walking in the light. I claim my victory. I'm walking in the light. Thanks be to God who leads us into victory. Make manifest trust the support of his knowledge in every place. Praise God. When I lay claim to my victory, I'm walking in the light. When you practice the truth, and the truth is not only in the sweet bar and bar, the truth also includes obeying the commands and the instructions of God. When I obey the commands and instructions of God, I'm walking in the light. To maintain fellowship with God, we must walk in the light of His Word. Anytime we neglect to do the Word of God, we are walking in darkness. Can I say that to somebody again? Any time we neglect to walk in the light of God's word, then we are walking in darkness. Any time we refuse to do the word of God, then we are walking in darkness. Any time, any time, any time, any time we refuse to do the word of God, then we are walking in darkness. What has, the, what has God said to you? What instructions have he, has he given you? It might look big, so high, you don't even know, you, you're singing, they are afraid enough for this. Anytime you allow yourself to shut down every word of God, you shut down the power of God's word, the generating set of God's word, 
darkness has started. You know when 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 electricity is cut and you have a power cut uh, and then you own the generator and then you want to switch off that generator and they have not restored energy. Uh, you, you're still gonna when you shut it down, you shut you shut down light. Anytime we shut down the word of God, we shut down the word of God. We have also restored darkness to our places. That's what happens. That's what happens. Refuse to 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 not walk in the word of God. Refuse it. Any power spirit that says you won't walk in the word of God, refuse and reject it. Fight for the word of God. Fight for the reality of God's word. Stand upon your rampart. Stand upon your watch and declare the word of God. Every time you stand on the Logos or the Rema word, you are walking in the light. Say, God said this to me. And you keep saying it, then you are walking in the light of God. You believe it and you say it. You keep walking in the light of God. Ah, you see, these are ways to walk in the light of God. It's not just I find a revelation. No, 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 no. That, that's part of it. God speaks to you. You walk in that light. But there are other ways. When I walk in the attributes and the essence of God, I am walking in the light. When I have fellowship with God, I am walking in the light. Uh, when I have fellowship with other believers, I am walking in the light. When I shun darkness, I am walking in the light. Uh, when I practice the word of God and the promises, the will of God, I stand on it. I am walking in the light. Bow down your head, bow down your heart. And I want you to begin to say, Lord, help me. Help me to walk in your light. You know, I said it, that God is in the light. We are the ones learning to walk in the light. Say, God, teach me to walk in your light. Help me to walk in your light. Teach me. Help me to walk in your light. Help me to walk in your light. It walk in your light in fellowship. To shun darkness. All those little, little foxes that spoil the vine. Help me to put them away. I want to fully all my life walk in your light. Is that, is that your heart cry? Lord, to fully walk in your light. I don't want to walk in light in an area and don't walk in light in another area. Lord, help me. Help me to walk in your light on all sides, on all fronts, in every area of my life. Help me to walk in your light. Help me to walk in your light. Help me to walk in your light. It's a good time to just pray in the Spirit one minute. Pray in the Spirit one minute. Lambro shi kapa libra so diabatua. Elugra de volo braca zezezer matutuelia. Vude vude la prai kashi egetelia. Ruma dele ke suava. Ele gota praca zemra dele copa. Iego vive liatabasia. Remando kilabra so kapiatashi atava. Is there any area of your life that, that you need the light of God? You need to walk in the light in that area. Begin to proclaim by faith. I walk in the light. I walk in the light in my finances. I walk in the light in my ministry. In the name of Jesus, I walk in light. In, 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 in my character, in my nature, in my person, I walk in the light. I walk in the light. Kaposhia, vendele frokosi ataba. Le prosisi ke livra dobra kake keshi ataba. Le vole vrakosi ke liatabrosa kapayara. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name and amen. Father, thank you. Father, grant us grace to remember that you are light, that our God is light, to know that we are also by privilege sons of light, and to live according to our mandate that we are the light of the world. Help us, O oh God, to walk in that light. Teach us as children of light. To, to shine our light in every place. The words here, arise, shine, for your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. We understand that our light will shine as much as we stay with you in Koinonia and fellowship. Because the light that our face carry is the light we find in you. Help us, therefore, to stay in your presence. Teach us, O oh God, to deepen our roots even in you. Help us. To live even for you and you alone. Thank you, eternal King of glory. Holy Spirit, come. 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 Help us in our walk. You are the one we call the Parakletos, the one who is God by our side. Help us. Teach us. Mandate us to walk in light in every area of our lives. Thank you, eternal King of glory. We exalt and magnify you. 
in Jesus name and amen and amen and amen hallelujah praise God that's been faith up for today I'm sure and I'm certain that you will keep walking even in light of God's word and your life will never be the same again like Paul here's my admonition for you like Paul admonished a Christian at Ephesus walk in the light it's time to walk in the light praise God don't forget this Sunday we'll meet again uh, at number 22, Isaac Alukolo, Okun Street, Naira Bet, Head of Isigwe, Fonleki, the ransom that was, I'd like to invite you. It's our final service, our last service, uh, even at that place. The following the Sunday that comes, we're going to be meeting at the Jesus place. I'd like you to be a part of that defining service. I'm going to be teaching on the spirit of prophecy. I'd like you to be in that service. It will change your life. It will transform you. It will make you a better person. The, your word will come and God will lift you up. I know this like I know my name. Your life is about to be transformed. See you even on Sunday. Cheers.